Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Um, in this video, I want to talk to you about how to pick rocket engines on your own. Now, I've done a previous video that you can find on our website, pretty much on any of the rocket kit pages, that explains the basics of picking an engine, basically uh, selecting it from the chart listed on our website. Um, in this video, I want to take that further into depth and, how to, and show you how you can do this yourself so you can pick the rocket engines for your own kits um, and your own rocket designs. Now, all the information that I'm going to share with you today comes from this uh, report called Technical Publication Number 28, uh, Selecting Rocket Motors, a Step-by-Step -step Procedure. Now you can download this for free from the Apogee Components website. Um, I used to charge around $6 for this, but I decided to give this away free uh, to the people that come to our website. Um, and the reason is because I want to make you a better rocketeer. You're already a great rocketeer, I'm going to make you even better by showing you the proper procedure on picking rocket engines. Now picking the engines requires some tools, and the tool that you're going to use is your computer. You're already at your computer. So basically, you're going to just use some software to help you pick the right rocket engine. Now, here at Apogee Components, we recommend the RockSim software. Now, RockSim is not cheap, but it's a really good software. Um, and if you don't have RockSim, you can download our free 30-day demo and give it a try. And the demo, can, you can use that to pick rocket engines, what you're going to see here today. Now, if you're not using Roxim, you can try some of the other um, software that is out there, but again, we recommend the Roxim software. And I'm, not, and I'm not trying in this video to get you to buy Roxim. I just want you to have some tools that you can use to pick the right rocket motors, because that's what you're going to require. Um, why this video? Um, the big reason is um, a lot of people think that the 1960s and early 70s were the golden age of model rocketry. Actually, that's wrong. Right now is the golden age of model rocketry. The number of rocket engines that are available today is just astronomical, and there's new ones coming out all the time. In fact, um, just yesterday, um, one of the manufacturers announced five new rocket engines. Um, and they keep coming out with new engines all the time. So our charts on our website uh, would get so long with rocket motor choices that it would just be overly con um, confusing for you and for our other customers. So that's why I want to show you how to pick your own engines so that you don't have to rely on us and it actually makes our job simpler because then we don't have to make these big long charts uh, available on our website. Okay, so uh, with the preliminaries out of the way, um, I'm going to go through the steps, and it is a step-by-step -step procedure. Um, basically, you're going to do step A, then step B, step C. So it is a logical sequence, um, but what's going to happen is there's not going to be one specific engine uh, that's going to work in your kit. Actually, there's going to be a lot of engines that can work in your rocket kit. And the process that we're going to go through is basically deselecting the engines that won't work, leaving you with a list of engines that will work. Okay. Um, so our first step is to, uh, to learn how to use the RockSim software or whatever software that you're using. Um, now if you go to the Apogee Components website, um, and if you go to the RockSim uh, software, and you can get there by clicking on the RockSim link up in the top uh, right hand corner, um, and then go to the RockSim tutorials, and these are a bunch of video tutorials where we walk you through how to use the software. And now once you know how to use the software, now we're going to get really in-depth in how to in using the software in selecting the rocket engines. So that's the first step, is learning how to uh, use the software and uh, to um, get set up. Um, so you're going to have to have your design already created in RockSim. Um, so now the, the next step, uh, when you go into RockSim and load the rocket engines, you're going to get this huge list of rocket engines that might fit your particular uh, rocket kit. Um, so the first thing that you have to do is to weed out the engines that you can't buy. Um, now the Apogee Components is a, is a great place to buy your rocket engines, but say you're in a hurry and uh, you want to go out to launch tomorrow and you don't have time to wait for the engines to arrive in the mail. Uh, so basically that's going to limit the number of choices that you have available. Another thing that might limit your choices is your age. 
Um, a lot of the bigger engines, um, you have to be 18 years old to purchase them. Smaller engines, like F and lower, pretty much any, anyone can buy, except for the loadable and the reloadable engines. Um, so basically, weed out all the engines you can't buy right away and just mark them out. So and that will save you a lot of time because if you can't buy them, why go through the process? Okay, so next uh, you're going to load the rocket into Roxim, and you're going to select from, so you've loaded in one engine, and now you're going to select a time delay. And what I recommend is selecting the longest rocket uh, delay that's available. And if it's a big motor, um, you're going to use the flight events to set the deployment. Um, and that technique is covered in the tutorial videos that I just talked about earlier. Um, so that's step three. Step four, um, now you loaded the engine into Roxim, you're going to look at the view screen and you're going to see if the rocket is statically stable with that engine installed. Now some of the bigger engines are so heavy that when you put them in a rocket it's going to move the center of gravity so far back that the rocket could be unstable. So that's going to be a clue right there that that's not a good engine to use. Um, now you can fix your design sometimes by adding nose weight to the front end of the rocket to make it statically stable. Uh, just be careful doing that. I, I don't recommend adding a lot of nose weight to rockets because we do want them to go pretty high. Step five, um, now you're ready to, to actually run the simulation. So you're going to set the launch conditions. Now you want to set the launch conditions pretty much as close as you think they're going to be on the day that you're actually launching rockets. Um, people ask me, what's the best motor for a specific kit? Well, there is no best motor because it depends on the launch conditions. So in this step number five, you're going to set your launch conditions. Um, now, you, uh, part of the launch conditions is setting the launch angle. Um, and I have a ro ro uh, rocket pad here. And you can see that the angle that you launch the rocket is adjustable. And you can launch the rocket pretty far over. Now, what we can't do is violate the NAR safety code. Now, this, the safety code is there for your own protection and, pr and protection of those people around you. So the NAR safety code says that the rocket can't be launched in winds greater than 20 miles per hour or at a, an angle that's more than 30 degrees measured from vertical. So now this is about 45 degrees, so you can't angle your launch conditions more than 30 degrees from vertical. So make sure you check this um, condition in Roxim that you're not violating it because we don't want to violate the safety code. Okay, and then the next step is actually launch the rocket. That's pretty easy. You just click on the launch button in Roxim. And then in step eight, what happened? Did the rocket actually launch? Now you can have um, a heavy rocket with a small rocket engine in it. Now if that rocket didn't leave the pad, you're going to get an icon in there in Roxim that shows you that the rocket didn't leave the pad. Um, if you get that, basically what it's saying is you've got to go back to step one and, and use a bigger rocket engine. The next thing you're going to look at is did the rocket crash? And you're going to get another icon if the rocket crashed before the parachute deployed. Now this is important obvious for uh, obvious safety reasons. Um, or it could be something, something silly like you didn't put a parachute into the rocket design. So go ahead and make sure you have a parachute or other recovery device in your rocket design. Next, we want to check the maximum altitude that the rocket has achieved. Now you can get this from the main summary screen on Roxem. Now, why is the maximum altitude important? Well, for most small rockets, it's not. But for big rockets, um, if you're flying with a club and you're flying at a site and they have a waiver up, up to like 6,000 feet, you can't violate that waiver or the club gets in trouble with the FAA. So there are instances where you don't want your rocket to go um, higher than the waiver. So that's one of your checks. If your rocket is flying higher than the waiver, obviously what you're going to have to do um, is take some precautions there um, and most likely you're just going to choose a smaller rocket engine for the rocket kit. 